Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skeletales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? That's right. We also share true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal. Heck yeah, we do. Hey, Brett, what are we talking about this week? You know, in honor of spring break, or maybe just needing a fucking break from spring, we are talking about vacations and the horrors that may happen while on vacation of the paranormal variety. Heck yeah. Oh, I've got some vacation horror stories that are not paranormal, but we're not going to get into those tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I had a very unpleasant time on Martha's Vineyard, a very long week in a night on Martha's Vineyard, uh, but not going to get into that. Not spooky. Teaser. Okay. I am very curious. This might have to be a Patreon video because that I'm intrigued. Alyssa, do you want to share your story first? Heck yeah, I do. Let's do it. Okay. So this one comes from Aaron. And they say, I still think about this to this day. It was my junior year of high school and my family and I went to the Galvez Hotel for spring break. We stayed in a room with two beds. We are a family of five. So my brother and I shared a bed while my little sister, four at the time, slept in the other bed with my parents. Everything was fine, but the last night we stayed there, I woke up in the middle of the night and felt super squished in the bed. I turn over, and in the middle of my brother and me, I see a girl with dark hair facing the other way towards my brother. I thought it was my little little sister. Sometimes during trips, she would crawl into bed with us. I start poking her back to get her to move. Melanie, go to the other side. And she said, okay. And I start falling asleep again as she started to move. The next morning, my brother asks, Aaron, why were you poking my face in the middle of the night? (laughs) I I was super confused and said, Melanie crawled into bed with us and she was taking up all the space. You didn't notice? Then my parents and Melanie said that she was sleeping in the same bed as my parents the whole night. At this point, I'm freaking out and we get into a whole argument about it. And my parents totally dismissed me and said I was dreaming. I know I definitely wasn't because she spoke back to me and moved before I fell asleep again. <laughs> to this day, I still believe that my brother and I slept with a ghost. Okay. So the Hotel Galvez is in Galveston, Texas. Is that how you say that? Yes. I have been there since my childhood. Yes. What? You've been to this hotel? No, we never stayed in a hotel. We always stayed in a dingy motel, but we we traveled to Galveston regularly for, that was our beach go-to when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Well, this is in Galveston. It is not a dingy motel. It is a quite grand looking hotel. And this information is coming from ghostcitytours.com. And it's no secret that the Hotel Galvez is haunted. With over a century of history, it's more surprising that there aren't other ghosts gallivanting about Galveston, Galvez Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the alliteration. It is best known for its temporary residence, the ghosts who checked in and never checked out. One inhabitant, a bride-to-be, met a grisly end in room 504. No, 501, close enough. Another, Sister Catherine, perished alongside 90 orphans who had been tied by a rope to her waist. What? (laughs) That's not funny, but it's horrible. What's the story with that? Okay, so Sister Catherine belonged to the Sisters of Charity, which at the time oversaw the St. Mary's Orphans Asylum. The hurricane of 1900 ravaged the island of Galveston and with it, the St. Mary's Orphans Asylum. In an attempt to save as many as possible, the sisters cut cloth into rope, which they then tied to the children. These ropes were then attached to the waists of the sisters who hoped to withstand the storm's belligerent winds. Some suspect that the ropes were counterproductive, actually (gasps) leading or at least contributing to the deaths of the orphans. 90 children and 10 sisters perished in the hurricane. Still attached to one another, their remains were found along the beach of the Galvez. Oh, it's 
That's terrible. I know. Their bodies were buried where they were discovered, leading some to suspect that the Hotel Galvez stands above their mass grave. It's no surprise that visitors claim to catch their apparitions. The next reported haunting is of phantom children. Visitors witnessed this unexplained apparition of a little girl near the hotel lobby, gift shop, and staircase, often seen bouncing up all. Guests report that she wears 19th century clothing. Even construction workers have claimed to see this ghoulish girl. They didn't know that she was a ghost at the time, of course, and notified the front desk that a child was playing near the construction area. Guests hear other phantom children running and laughing throughout the hotel, playing the piano in the lobby, or running amok through the halls. You can hear the sound of their laughter if you listen closely enough, though the children themselves remain unseen. Some suspect these are the orphans killed during the hurricane of 1900. So perhaps Sister Catherine lurks close at hand as well. It absolutely is a little orphan girl in his little bed. She's like snuggling up with her brothers and in an orphanage and they all sleep in one big bed anyway. You know they all do. And she move over. Okay. Oh, what if they were like tied together by their sheets when they woke up in the morning at tie between them? <gasps> that is one of the most horrible, tragic stories I've ever so read. So sad. 90 babies. That's really sad. <gasps> So that is the haunting of the Hotel Galvez in Galveston and this little boy who slept with one of the ghosts. Oh, tragic but delightful. Hey, Britt, do you have a story for me that doesn't involve a bunch of dead children tied together? No dead children in my story. Yay! But haunted hotel, here we come. (laughs) This story comes from Jamie. Me and my partner's family went on a trip to a 600-year-old lodge called the Mermaid Inn. It had multiple rooms with a bar, living room, and kitchen. It's in the countryside with next to no signal, and the internet isn't great. The place is great for get-togethers, though. It is known for being haunted, but when I hear about places being haunted, I just think, ah, maybe it's just something quirky about the place. So we settled in one room, and things were fine the first night. Nothing fell out of the ordinary. The second night was crazy. I have struggles sleeping in silence, so I use white noise every night to block out small noises as I hyper-focus on every sound, and it really distracts me. So anyways, next to my bedside was my phone playing white noise, and on my partner's side was his phone playing it too. I'm a very light sleeper, and it takes me around an hour to sleep. But with the added headache that I had, I just couldn't settle. I kept hearing tapping on the side of the wardrobe. It was a very distinct sound. Sometimes the tapping would move to the floor from my partner's side to my side. It was keeping me awake. I knew what it was, but I just thought, ah, maybe it'll stop doing it soon. At 327, I was so close to sleep when the white noise stopped on my partner's phone. The sudden change in sound made me jump up. <gasps> And then mine suddenly made three pulsing static sounds. And then it went back to normal for maybe one second and then lowered in volume. I thought to myself, okay, it's going to get worse, isn't it? I fix the white noise on each phone and lie back down. I hear the tapping again. It went to my partner's side, and then the white noise lowered in volume, and then almost like a finger tapping the phone afterwards. And then almost two seconds later, my phone lowered in volume too. Again, I fixed both phones, but it continued to happen, either 10 seconds apart or at the same time. My partner's wide-eyed at this point, under the sheets, freaking out because it's superstitious now. And this happened about 15 times. There were two empty bunk beds next to me on my side. I heard it get sat on and the noise was so distinct and creaky. I knew when it got up because the mattress made a sprung up noise. 
Again, the white noise dimmed down, but only on my side. I sat up and said, please stop now. I'm trying to sleep and you're making so much noise. Then my phone lowered down to the lowest volume setting and the wardrobe in the room, which isn't big and it's made of wood that's not even very thick and had empty hangers in it. Soon the hangers began to move inside. My partner sits up and goes, you heard that right? And I said, yeah, I did. It then used one hanger to bang against the back of the wardrobe. After them doing this every two minutes or so, I said, please just let me sleep. It's nearly 4.30 a.m. Then it made one loud bang in the wardrobe. And I turned to my partner, who's really scared of anything paranormal, who's now under the covers, hot AF, because he won't expose himself to any part. I say to the ghost, well, I need to pee, so leave the room, will ya? Well, I'm only joking, but it made another huge bang. And after I got back from peeing, I lay back, I'm about to relax again, and then I hear the water bottle next to my bed start making a crunching sound on the label. And then it sounds like nails are gliding across it. I said, no, that's too close. You've gone too far. And I moved the water bottle away and tried to sleep again. I then felt the end of my pillow getting pushed down on. I opened my eyes to see a literal handprint being created on the pillow, getting bigger with the more pressure that's added. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I throw my pillow on the floor and say, no, don't get that close to me. I don't like that. The movements around the room carry on, but eventually I do fall asleep. The other nights, the hangers would continue to go on, but we were too drunk on those nights, so we slept more heavier than usual. <laughs> the end. So I was very curious, the Mermaid Inn. This is located in Rye in southern England, UK, and it is rumored to be very haunted. One of the most common sightings that people have are of two dueling men in one of the bedrooms. <laughs> so I'm going to read one of the stories. There had been rumors of a haunting in the Elizabethan bedchamber. And one year, a lady claiming to be a psychic asked to sleep in the room that night. Mrs. Aldington, the then owner, joined her and the lady slept very well. But during the night, Mrs. Aldington awoke to find a duel raging about her. The combatants were dressed in doublets and hose, fighting, oh Jesus, rapiers? What are those? That, I know that word. It's the, not, it's the, it's the swords they're using. The victor disposed of the body of his opponent by throwing it down a secret toilet situated in the corner of the room. Ooh, finding Ooh. out facts. Um, fast forward to the year 1993. Actress Kiki Kendrick. Do you know who that is? No. Kiki Kendrick is just like a super... British actress who's kind of been secondhand role in like dozens of shows and movies and stuff. Google her if you're curious. Once you see her face, you're like, oh, yeah, I've seen you in all those things. Anyways, her and her husband, Robin, stayed at the Mermaid Inn in 1993. This is what she said. We had booked four. Oh, I can do British. We had booked four nights in the Liz Elizabethan bedchamber. It was our first ever visit to Rye. We knew nothing about the mermaid's ghost or that it was even haunted. On our first night, after a couple of drinks in the bar, we retired to our room at about midnight. Around 4 a.m. suddenly, and for no reason, we both sat 
bolt upright in bed. There was an eerie presence. The warm and toasty room had suddenly turned strangely cold, and we could hear a fight going on in the corner of the room. By the fireplace there were huffs and puffs and sounds of clashing knives. We could see shapes moving as if looking through opaque glass. They fought violently. It was very scary. The next evening we told the barman, and he produced an old newspaper article about ghosts in the Elizabethan bedchamber, and had been written by two journalists who had stayed there six months earlier. It read word for word as we had seen it. The second night the same thing happened, but only I saw it. In the intervening years we have stayed in the same room, but have never experienced such happenings again. Crazy. So two people have seen this random thing happen? Plus these journalists, apparently. So yeah, these clashing duels. I Also, I just have to say, if you're the ghosts of these dueling people, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess if you like dueling every night, it's like 3 a.m. Let's meet at the Elizabethan chamber for our duel, nightly duel. Did Kiki, the actress, also witness someone get thrown into a secret toilet? I'm very intrigued by the secret toilet. Doesn't sound like that. So I did read a little bit about the mermaid and there are several secret chambers, toilets, rooms, passageways in this. At one point, the Mermaid Inn was owned by some group doing nefarious activities for the sole purpose because they have the secret passageways. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been around for a while and very haunted. Alyssa, do you have another story to share? I do. I do. The Mermaid Inn, though, man. We'll have to go try to stay there some night. Yes, please. Wouldn't that be a fun adventure? We'll gather all of our skeleton friends, and we can just go on a world tour to all of these pubs we talk about, hotels we talk about. And it's like, it'll take a year, but we will knock it out and see everything. Like, we won't sleep at all. We're all going to uh-uh. be crabby-ass bitches. We're going to go see no some cryptids sleep. in Scotland. Yeah. We're going to go around the world. Nessie. All right. All right. I'm in. Let's do it. Okay. So this story comes from Alex and they say, I just got back from a week long vacation last night and the same activity from the house I was staying in is going on at my apartment. I apologize in advance for any incoherence in what I say because I haven't gotten much sleep the last week. The house we stayed in was gorgeous. And since my entire extended family was staying there, 18 people. It was also absolutely massive. It was split into two parts. The old side of the house, roughly just a basement studio and three bedrooms upstairs and the newer side. I'm not going to get into too much detail about the newer side as no paranormal activity took place there, but it was a gorgeous house. I shared a room with my girlfriend, and since we were the last to arrive, we got the worst room in the house. Not only did we get the smallest room in the house, it was about 10 foot by 10 foot, it was also on the old side of the house, directly in front of the basement stairs. As I had been driving for six hours that day, I was pretty tired, so I said hello to everyone and quickly got into bed to go to sleep. It was around 11 p.m. when my girlfriend and I got into bed. She's lucky in the sense that she can fall asleep just about anywhere in five minutes. So she was asleep within seconds. I had a weird, uneasy feeling in my chest. Not necessarily a scary feeling, just that annoying alert feeling you get when you feel like something is watching you. To help ease myself, I hopped right down into a YouTube rabbit hole. About an hour into my journey, I could tell that my girlfriend was having a nightmare, so I put my hand on her arm to gently wake her up, but as soon as I touched her, she bolted awake, screaming, and mumbled, the ghost, and immediately went back to sleep. (laughs) I had just started to get tired, and safe to say, I was sufficiently creeped out at this point, so back down the rabbit hole, I went. About two hours went by when my girlfriend woke up screaming again, saying, the footsteps are close and passed out immediately. I decided I'm not going to sleep that night and went right back to YouTube. Another hour passes and I see my girlfriend sit up in bed, but she was still asleep. 
She moved so she was sitting on the edge of the bed and started having a conversation with the corner of the room. She eventually laid back down, but not before. I was absolutely terrified. Activity died down after the first night, usually just creaks in the floor or knocks on the wall or door. The only other standout event besides movement around the room happened on the second night when something sat down on the edge of my bed. My first thought was that my cat jumped on the bed, but I remembered I wasn't at my apartment and sat up just in time to see the indentation lift up off the edge of the bed. It couldn't have been my girlfriend as she was on the opposite side of the bed and nowhere near where that indentation happened. Also, the bed I was staying on was firm as a rock, so it was challenging to push that far down into it. Fast forward one more sleepless night and I'm on my way home. After a long day of driving, I got back and settled down with some Netflix. My girlfriend had plans to go hang out with her friends, so she was out for most of the night. I thought I'd finally get a break from the spooky stuff when my dog and cat both start tracking something around my apartment. The way their heads were moving, whatever they saw was moving fast. Now I've seen them track bugs before, but neither of them really focuses on it too much. They usually just huff and ignore it. But this was different. Poppy, my dog, started growling when whatever it was moved into the corner of the room. My cat, Anna, jumped up right next to me on the couch while Poppy growled at the corner and started to slowly back up towards me. After a full week of crap like this, I wasn't even scared anymore, just pissed off and tired because it likes to keep me from falling asleep. Poppy and Anna both track the thing moving out of the corner towards us, so she starts barking like crazy. After I got her to stop barking, I heard a growl come from the center of the room. It was pretty high-pitched, like a small dog or girl. Judging by where my pets were tracking, it looked like it was very short, very fast, and could jump up on a table and counters. I stood up, stared in its general direction, and said, please leave. I got a huge wave of chills and got goosebumps in places I didn't know I could get goosebumps. His penis. The penis. (laughs) Can you get get goosebumps on your penis? Someone write in and let us know. But I said it again, much louder and more stern this time while opening my front door to let it out. Whatever it was got really upset. It didn't do anything, but I could feel a lot of anger. My pets tracked it moving towards the door. So I thought I was in the clear. About two minutes later, my dog starts barking at the corner of the room where the door is while my cat is on full alert staring at the same place. At this point, I just give up and hope it leaves me alone since it it hadn't been violent yet, just annoying. Poppy eventually fell asleep at my feet and Anna had run into the other room, occasionally poking her head out the door to look in and immediately spring back into the room. I just gave up dealing with it at this point. I put my earbuds in to block out the knocks on the walls and watch some YouTube. I decided to stay up until my girlfriend got back to let her know what was happening. But whatever it was took this as an opportunity to mess with me. I was laying on my couch and kept feeling something poking me every five minutes. Not hard, just constant pokes on my arms and legs and feet. After this went on for a while, it pulled up on my nostrils. Again, I just ignored it because I learned it just gets worse if I engage with it. Whenever something like this would happen, I could feel the apartment get much colder, despite my thermostat saying it was 72 degrees. After hours of knocking, poking, pulling, and the occasional arm brush, my girlfriend finally got home. The second she got through the door, I could tell whatever it was left, as I had no uneasy feeling and there were no more weird noises. So I had one of the most restful nights I'd had in over a week. I don't know what I'm dealing with, but there was one point during the second night of my vacation where I thought I saw a shadow person, but I'm not sure. It was out of the corner of my eye, but I saw someone, maybe like five foot ten, standing at the foot of my bed. They looked like a character in a video game you haven't unlocked yet, completely black with a featureless face. 
On top of this, my brother, who was staying in the basement alone, said he saw a similar person standing in the kitchen area when he was trying to sleep one night. Whatever was in that haunted house absolutely came back to his house with him, though. I have to write in that suitcase. Maybe they were really into his YouTube videos and wanted to see what happened. They fell into the hole, the YouTube hole, and then they were mad that he stopped watching them. Angry that he switched off YouTube to go to bed. And it was like, let me poke you in the face until you turn it back on. Maybe he was watching funny cat videos. Refurbishing old furniture. That's what I (laughs) like to watch. But I do not like that idea of being able to bring home a spirit from vacation. Mm -mm. Really, really makes you not want to go on that vacay is what it is. I'm going to tell you a story that goes back into time a little bit from the 1960s. Oh, This story comes from Byron. Uh, This happened in the 60s while on vacation with my late aunt and uncle visiting Niagara Falls. (gasps) We were late arriving traveling. Have you been to the Niagara? Oh, yeah. Stomping grounds? Heck yeah, I have been the old falls. Ye old falls. Ye old falls. They were late traveling through torrential rain, but it had stopped by the time we parked near Horseshoe Falls. Once we'd seen most of the attractions and were returning to the car, a pretty young girl about nine years old approached us in tears. (gasps) Can you help? me catch my naughty doggy rose as i took her for a walk but she won't come back to me and if i don't catch her my mom will be very cross is that your western new york accent what was that exactly well she the way she speaks seems very old timey all right new york can you help me catch my naughty doggy rose see that doesn't (laughs) <laughs> Just go with the first one. Though. Hey, Rose, my dog. She implored this of us. Ah, sure. Okay, he's a New Yorker. Sure. What's your dog's name again? Says Uncle. Okay, let me tell you something, Britt. I'm from this area of the world. Give me a little sample. Okay, tell me. Hello, Britt. My name's Alyssa. I'm from Rochester, New York. No, play it up. Rochester is very nasally. This is more how we talk up there. So my little dog, have you seen my little dog? I, I just let the dog out. Okay, okay. Sure. What's your dog's name again? <laughs> Uncle replied. Are you just loving my New York accent? Love it. It's like I'm home. Rose, she thinks I'm playing with her, but lets me catch her, and then she runs off again. And she pointed to a small mongrel dog about 50 yards away. Well, catching that little monster wasn't easy, but eventually we cornered her against the rear wall of the car park, and I managed to nab the playful dog that seemed not more than just a puppy handing her over to the young mistress who gratefully clipped her collar on and said, Oh, thank you, sir. I'm ever so grateful. And gave me the most beautiful smile, which seemed to brighten a dreary afternoon. I watched her walk back the way we'd come before joining my relatives to begin the walk back to the car. Hey, where'd they go? Uncle suddenly asked, and though we'd not paid much attention to the girl... They had both vanished. Ah, her folks must have collected them while we didn't notice, Auntie reasoned. And I doubt either of us believed that. But a little girl and her dog don't just disappear, do they? So back in the car and on our way to Ontario, Canada, we'd not gone far when suddenly a cacophony of loud emergency sirens and flashing red lights caused us to slow and pull over along with the other traffic as a convoy of emergency vehicles passed en route to a place in the distance. The dreary day closed in again the rain returning with a vengeance, reducing visibility and making it unnaturally dark. Ah, I'm really tired, so I'm going to stop at the first motel we come to so we can recharge our batteries, have supper, and get a fresh start in the morning. Aunt Edith isn't expecting us till morning afternoon anyway, Uncle declared. I always enjoyed vacations as a young lad when you're not at home. 
So in fresh pajamas, Uncle turned on the TV as Auntie soaked in the bath, tuning in to a local news feature, showing what the emergency vehicles who earlier passed us had responded to, a 70-vehicle crash on the very highway that we'd been on with at least 40 people dead and over 100 injured. Well, Byron, looks like our little ghost girl and her dog saved our lives he sighed. If it not for her, we'd have been right in the middle of that mess. <gasps> oh. Little dog girl saved their life. The little girl. I wanted to know a little bit more about her. I, I thought she was part of the accident. I wasn't really sure where we were going. I know. Why are you bringing your little puppy to Niagara Falls? It's very interesting. Great stories. I'm ready for a vacation now. I don't even care about a ghost. I, I'm down for some old Victorian hotels. Not with little ghost girls, though. I don't want that. <laughs> we should always ask for the most haunted room in a hotel. I am staying at a Fairfield Inn that was probably built two years ago. I don't <laughs> know if there is a haunted room in here, but I didn't ask. You got We got to be asking. I really am feeling like I'm letting myself down here. Next time. If you have stayed in a haunted hotel or have had a haunted vacation or a cursed vacation where nothing seems to go right or you took an item from your destination <gasps> and you think that it has cursed you and to the point where you maybe mailed it back, I want to hear about it. You should send those into our hot box at skeletalespodcast at gmail.com or call them into the hotline. 302-689-DEAD, 302-689-3323. Don't worry, no one answers. It's just a voicemail and we would love to hear from you. We are on all of the socials out there, Skeletales Podcast or Skeletales Pod. And we also have a merch shop, Skeletales Podcast at Etsy.com. We've got some haunted shit over there, but also some really cool Skeletales swag. Heck yeah. Also, go check us out on YouTube. I know we also said socials. I'm not sure if that falls in that category, but you can go check out our YouTube channel. Go subscribe over there. And hey, Britt, is there anything else? Yes, there was one time I was staying in this one room and haunt y'all later. Haunt you later. Good night. Good night.